if, if that makes sense, you know, take these sort of off the wall decks, but then actually make them work enough to bring to a tournament. Um, the first game has just died, and it is tied with his Druid, so maybe this is going to be more of a slight standard list. As a, you know, we've not seen too many differentiations uh, within the Druid deck list uh, normally, but it is tied. And Hannibal Z, as we can see, playing Warlock Hunter Paladin, so there is definitely a lot of potential for some aggressive decks within those classes. Oh man, so no surprises there, uh, he is playing a zoo and a great opening with the flame map to start things off. So not only a good matchup, but a good opening. Uh, Tides has double wrath to be able to counter the, the early aggression, but he decides to skip it because he will not have the turn free play and Pirate Shredder on turn free with the coin is something he probably needs. Yeah, and interesting as well, Hannibal's actually uh, just dropped down the Die Wolf just to fill out the curve because next turn he doesn't have a 3 drop, so he's looking at potentially tapping Flame Imp next turn. Uh, really quick start, and Hannibal uh, also probably pretty happy with this uh, matchup, getting that. It's really difficult to get a matchup you actually want when there's three decks to choose from on both sides, but definitely getting Zoo into Druid must be uh, feeling pretty good for him right now. Yeah, and uh, getting the Haunted Creeper from the top uh, also does feel really good. Instead, he will have to tap, and right now, even if the Shredder comes down, there is so much damage in, in coming that uh, Tides is forced to Wrath here instead. And he gets Mind Control Tech, by the way. Yeah, we saw Strike Pro play this, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is really interesting. Uh, you know, Tides running a very similar list, Balak's things, the inclusion of the Mind Control Tech. Bit of, a, bit of a surprise factor, as it's not too common in Druid, but definitely against Zoo, it's going to make his matchup a little bit better if he can just uh, fend off this early aggression from Hannibal. Yeah, that might be the thing, actually, because um, we've seen Mind Control Tech in, uh, as, a, as a staple card in Druid decks uh, in the times where Zoo, Demon Zoo, was super popular on Ladder and everywhere. But then when the Control Warlock became more popular, Mind Control Tech somehow faded away because it wasn't use, uh, useful that much. But now, this might be, you know, the, the moment where Mind Control Tech becomes, again, a card you have to include in your deck. Yeah, because if you think about it, it sort of makes the Druids' uh, harder matchups a little bit better. Um, so, like, there's the Zoo, which is the obvious one, it's Enclosure there, it's two. Um, and then there's also even, like, Tempo Mage. It's Decent versus Tempo Mage. It's another low minion you can give to, say, the Mirror Entity. But also, Tempo Mage normally does want to fill up the board pretty hard, so stealing something like a Flame Waker, or even, like, an Azure Drake or something like that would be pretty big. And there's another interesting card. Yeah, there is. Uh, well, Tides of Time really hoped for a swipe, but uh, Stampede Kodo. This means that the ma the zoo matchup can be even more in well not in favor but a bit easier right if you run cards like Stampede and Kodo. Yeah, hundred percent. Stampede and Kodo is a really interesting card because its effect is very powerful versus a lot of cards in a lot of decks. But I think the issue is the competition for five drops and um, you know like having slightly bigger impacts. Uh, it is a little bit rough, so Stampede and Kodo doesn't seem too much play, and that is a very early concede from Tide, so, you know, he's pretty confident that he can't win this matchup, so he's just getting out of the game, okay, you know, he's thinking, Hannibal, you've took the Zooid, uh, the Zoo versus Druid matchup, or the Zooid matchup, I'm deciding to call it for some reason, um, you've took that matchup, it's a good matchup, you had a really good start, let's just end this game and move on to the next one. Yeah, absolutely, and, um... What, what, what is in his lineup? Um, he still has the the rogue and the warrior, but yeah, he, he continues with the with the druid with those interesting cards. Yeah, and what are the odds on this being face hunter nymph from Mr. Agro, who is Hannibal Z2? <laughs> I think there are actually big odds. And have we seen hunter in this tournament overall before? Hmm. I don't think yeah. so. No, I don't think we have yet, because we were talking uh, specifically, in fact, to the fact that Orange didn't take Hunter, which is a deck he almost has consistently taken to every tournament in the past few months. So, really interesting one, and as we can see with the abuse of Sergeant, this is definitely a more aggressive Hunter. Yeah, and I want to um, turn your attention into that into Tide's hand, because if uh, there are any cards you want to have versus a face Hunter or any kind of Hunter, those are the cards that Tides of Time has in hand. He has everything. He has the swipe, his double swipe, Keeper with Innervate and the Wrath, so he can, and even the Living Roots uh, being played in the very first turn to be able to to contain the small creatures. Uh, so I think this matchup will go into Tide's favor, and I will be really surprised if Hannibal uh, finds enough damage to go through it. Yeah, this is actually looking really strong for Tides because the thing is, he's pretty much tested the trap that it's uh, a snake trap now, so he can choose to proc that whenever he wants and then swipe. 
down Kodo. all the snakes. So it's Kodo time! Stampeding Kodo deals with the and, two one. And I suppose when you can innovate out one of these guys with the my greetings, a uh, slight BM there, tactical BM we'll call it. Um, this is now uh, pretty rough, and I was actually just laughing at that code. So he's, um, you know, pretty happy with that. Just sort of, you know, appreciating the fact that that actually just happened to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Like you have to appreciate a good deck building, and Tides of Time can bring those weird cards that uh, sometimes do not work, but in those situations where he applies them, they actually do work for him. Yep, and these living roots now putting in a lot of work. And now he decided to pop that snake trap. Get a clean swipe off that's doing so much damage across the board. And then just still pushing with his minions. So he still keeps a token to be able to maybe proc, say, if there's a freezing trap in there. Um, so he's still got that and the 3-5 body. And he can follow up with a multitude of answers. Either the Keeper of the Grove, as we said earlier, the second swipe. Or just play Druid of the Claw and Taunt and just be more defensive. As he's already, uh, you know, actually pretty ahead in this matchup now. Yeah, and Hannibal's decided to go for Animal Companion instead of um, a more control play with Kill Command in the 3-5 and having that Haunted Creeper because he knows that he's running out of cards. He needs to deal as much damage as possible and Kill Command pro promises the 5 damage to face, but it will be really hard for him to come back. Well, Highway is one of the cards that can help him a bit, but then Tides, how much damage does he even have next turn? Uh, he has a. Uh, he's on 12 next set, uh, 13 with hero power, right? So, um, not quite there yet, but he does have the option of just playing Keeper of the Grove um, onto the. Uh, actually, does he even need it? He can go face with mm. everything, right? So, let me think. Yeah, because I think even with like an owl on the taunt and then going face with everything from the hunter, even with a kill command owl. Um, hero power, I don't think that's enough to actually kill Tide. So Tide has done the maths, knows there's nothing to actually fear next turn. And this is looking really strong. He has Swipe and a Keeper of the Grove with the coin as well. So we can actually play both and just win next turn. I, I really like it. And I think the five drop in the Druid deck was a bit of a mystery drop as well, like as well as the Secret Paladins. Because sometimes you, you run double as you Drake, sometimes you run one and Lotha, and some people do not run Lotha at all. Uh, some people at Belchers, and Tyz uh, is bringing, bringing the, the Kodo, which is really cool, and uh, it, it didn't work versus the Zoo because Zoo opening was so, uh, too fast, but versus Hunter, it was really beautiful. Yeah, and the fact that you see the power of it in terms of dealing with cards are kind of awkward to deal with, so it took down the Horse Rider, which is as the Divine Shield, which means nothing to the Kodo, but also you look at some other cards, like same with Minibot, and then things like Acolyte of Pain, which means it draws no cards if you do it on an undamaged one, so there's definitely a lot of value to that card, and Tides has uh, made it work, because, you know, the Innovate really helped him, I think, early on, and this is, uh, yeah, this is this one's going to be game, so as, as quickly as Tides lost the Zoo matchup, he then just won the Druid versus Hunter matchup pretty quick, so uh, fit, probably feeling pretty good, and now we can follow up with either his warrior or rogue. Yeah, and I, I wonder what kind of warriors he brings you. Is it the, the dragon warrior that he likes so much, or is he going to be something else? Yeah, I mean, after seeing that, it, it could really be anything, couldn't it? The combination of it being tired, and then the fact that he's already shown in what we, you know, the, the class that's probably the most standard in terms of builds, so for the druid. Um, you know, still fitting in some different cards there and uh, you know, making big impact on the matches. Absolutely. And there is also Rogue. So we've seen a, a different build of Rogue from Life Coach uh, yesterday with um, without oil, uh, being more of a gadgets and gadgets and build with the uh, with Tomb Pillagers. And Ties of Time, I know he's a big fan of the Mill Rogue. Is it possible that he's actually bringing <laughs> this deck to the tournament? It's, uh, like we said, anything is possible, Nymphs. Um, he is going for his warrior, though, so we'll have to wait to see the rogue, hopefully. And the warrior does look like patron. There's still, there's actually a couple of spots that can, uh, in the deck, where you can fill out sort of more choice cards. So, you know, people, some people play Corcorons, uh, Double Corsair. Um, you know, we've even seen some uh, patrons with, like, uh, Face Monkey in them and things like that. So there's definitely some room for some uh, bit more tech from Tides, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. So looking at this matchup overall, uh, I would say that Patron has an advantage because uh, Patron has all the tools that work with the combo. They work anti-aggro, so Whirlwinds, Unstable Ghoul. Um, he has uh, Sludge Belcher as well, so he has Taunts and Weapons. So this should be in favor of, the, of Patron, but on the other hand, 
sometimes Hunter can just put you low enough and win from there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's be honest, this Hunter deck is built to be pretty quick. And Hannibal Z also has the sort of slight fallback of playing a high main, which can be a bit rough for the Warrior to deal with a lot of the time. But as you said, and um, even just starting with the Ghoul makes this awkward. And now this this Lepanon just doing two with its death rattle and not even being able to attack uh, because it does require the quick shot to clear that Ghoul up. So pretty good start for Tides. Um, Maybe a little bit, you know, a little bit rough not having something to do on turn three, but in this matchup, even the armor's good because all you're trying to do is just to not die in, say, the first five turns, and then after that, you should be able to stabilize. An okay card from for Hannibal's having Misha instead of, uh, let's say, Leok. Leok would be the, the most terrible, but uh, Dice goes for, for a quick execute, not to take much more damage, so he decided not to go for Death Spin. He, uh, he really values his health at the moment. Yeah, this is pretty reasonable because the Death Bite doesn't really do too much. And like you said, this guards his health and um, he has Belcher for follow up. And then he can look at playing a Death Bite because let's be honest, like the, the minions from Hannibal Z never really warrant a Death Bite fully to actually kill. And this Belcher is going to trade really nicely versus the Shredder. Yeah, Hannibal Z do something else. Oh, he got a high main, so he can actually coin the high main. But then he will have to uh, just leave uh, the Shredder into the Belcher. So maybe just going for the secrets. Uh, but then Tides of Time will not have uh, will not have to attack. He he will know that something is up. How how are you liking potentially run the shredder in, see what happens, and then it doesn't feel great. But then quick shot the shredder and then coin into the uh, trap the two traps because then you still have a token left, and then it might proc the bounce, which then just although it's just bounce a one two it actually just slows the warrior down a little bit, and then you can push with high main. I think like I still like the Hymen uh, most because it puts the, the biggest threat on the board, the most power, and uh, you hope that the, the thing you get from Shredder will be able to kill the Belcher. And then quick shot the one two and go f six yeah. to face. Yeah, it never feels bad to play high main a turn early than it's yeah, normally exactly. wild, right? <laughs> and what if he would get like a second high main, then you just go high main to high main and uh, high five yourself? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And this is probably going to be a quick shot onto the, uh, the one two. I would say to clear it up and then maybe trade the high main into the 1 4, do you think? That is re reasonable. You do want to get rid of the armor smith, especially because there is a death spite online. So, it, he healing armor smith, even though you're missing 6 damage to face and you're actually giving him 1 armor, over time might be better. Um, because uh, if there is a patron draw, your opponent can get so many, uh, so, so much armor and the high main is going to die anyway for the death spite. Yeah, and the patrons actually fare okay versus the uh, the hyenas from the high main because, like, although they are hitting for two, it's not three, is it? So they're still gonna potentially spawn more patrons. So time but, to time, plays up the high main there pretty nicely. But honestly, like the fact that Hannibal Z attacked into face means that high main was able to deal twelve points of damage. So that uh, worked in his favor. There, there were no patrons for for ties of time, so the decision to be more aggressive was uh, a bit better for him. Yep, but Hannibal Z's next turn is going to be a little bit rough with the uh, that Lotheb coming down. And then Lotheb's actually a card you don't see too often in Patron. Um, it's not it's not like a super common pick, I don't think. Um, and with three spells out of four cards, that's definitely rough. And just playing Creeper Hero Power is going to feel uh, very, very slow for Hannibal here. Yeah, and Tice was able to keep himself uh, pretty healthy on, uh, on 24 at the moment, so being happy about the situation. And getting another weapon that doesn't matter that much unless he goes for for that fire war axe and uh, shredder and armor up to get uh, himself even even further. But uh, Despite has a, a big advantage here, which is um, the wooden effect that will be able to clear spiders, for example, uh, if if he decides to clear them next turn. Yeah, this is gonna be really nice because suddenly there's so much pressure the tide just put on. The Hannibal's got to think, do I clear these minions now? And the second they, an aggressive hunter starts having to use kill command on a you know on the on the low seven. Probably not the bow hunter. The bow's probably gonna hit face with the freezing trap. Oh he does kill the shredder, that's interesting. That's probably because he tried to kill the minions um, to deny a, a battle rage. Like if your opponent has one card in hand, you, you are thinking, if there is a battle rage, I will be in trouble. So we want to dodge that. But there is Dr. Boom instead. Yep, Dr. Boom's normally pretty reasonable, and the interesting attack on the 1-1, one, one, like you said, because that kind of just plays into Battle Rage more than anything. So one of the few cards that you would think would bring the Warrior back into this game, in terms of card, uh, 
card draw at least. He does actually play into a little bit. Um, but we can see that he can just run this uh, run this ooze in if he really wants. I think there's some value in actually just giving him two tokens over the fact that there's a beast or for a potential second kill command. Yeah, that's true. And this is uh, really interesting because Hannibal Z will be able to play Freezing Trap and High Main. And even though seeing Dr. Boom for the second time is not good, High Main will be able to connect to face. Or it will force Tides of Time to attack into the High Main. Yeah, and that is a battle rage though, so we will see the bounce. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, Tides doesn't really have much uh, much other play than to just re-drop re uh, Dr. Boom. He can't really get a, a good battle rage off there, so I think um, this is a bit of a rough spot. That actual killing the Creeper so that it didn't mean he, Hannibal had to use the weapon to kill a, a bomb was actually pretty big, because now there's two charges of that weapon as well. Yeah, that's true. But then Hannibal's is at 11 already, and then Tides uh, has the firework, so free damage there. The bombs can deal damage. Doctor Boom is still uh, threatening, so this means that uh, Hannibal Z might be forced to kill Doctor Boom or just ignore him and hope uh, there is no lethal from Tides of Time. Yeah, and this is actually a little bit crazy that an unfortunate for Hannibal that the card he drew into was Glaive Zuka when he got to you know like the additional proc on his. Uh, his bow, so that was kind of rough, you know, a bit of a dead draw from him, and that's actually just going to clear up this game too pretty quickly again. So uh, Tide's getting the, you know, decent matchup with his warrior, and, and now he just has Rogue to win with. Yeah, the guys are swinging, and uh, what do you think uh, the Rogue is going to be? Do you think it's... Um... I hope it's going to be something crazy, <laughs> but um, I would imagine, especially because the way the mayor is at the moment, that it's probably going to be at least a variant of Oil Rogue. I can't imagine it being too too wild. It, I, I wish it's... Uh, you know, I hope it's Mill, though, because that would just be funny <laughs> more, more than anything. Yeah, Mill Rogue would be amazing to watch, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's going to be Oil. And uh, seeing the forest here from, from Tides of Time seems like it might actually be... The oil variant. It could we'll still see. be Reno Rogue. No, <laughs> Reno we have Rogue. not seen any duplicates yet. It could be Reno. <laughs> oh man, new Tides Rogue. I want to see that for sure. <laughs> and I'm Hannibal... sure uh, across the board, there's everyone has tried every Reno variant <laughs> just to see. You know, at least tried Reno in every class. Well, I, I'm sure a lot of people tried. And failed? Do you think? <laughs> I, a, a lot of them failed. Yes. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen Reno Face Hunter. That didn't work. Reno Face Hunter? Yeah. That's interesting. So like Although I actually was casting the game after our cast last night where uh, someone had Reno Zoo, which was interesting. Yeah, you know, like in a Warlock, you naturally drop with health, right? So at some point you can slam a, a good 6 mana 4-6 that will actually help you with the racing. And you can, uh, you, the, the dynamics of the deck change a bit because then you can um, not concern yourself with your health pool. But overall, the card do does not support the, of the strategy <laughs> of the deck. Nymph promoting this. But back to the game, and Tides has um, an, a pretty okay hand, I would say, but Hannibal's definitely got a reasonable start with being able to safely get that juggler down for a turn. Uh, made it a little bit awkward there, just getting one attack out of it. And um, and he's got a good follow-up as well with having like Animal Companion, Juggler, Shredder, and Lepinome. He's definitely got options, and now... He will have a secret activated as well, which yeah. could be. I think we've seen just Snake and Freezing, right? Yeah, that's true. We've only seen Snake and Freezing. Now getting a Huffer, so Hannibal's recognizing in this matchup you have to pressure as much as possible. Getting the Lothab as well. So both players having Lothab now, and uh, there is a Snake Trap. No AOE, so those snakes is, are going to deal some damage, and they, they will be really useful to Hannibal. Yeah, this is kind of nice. If he actually wants to, he can just throw the snakes in and then drop Shredder. Um, Probably just to play around the AoE. Yeah, absolutely. But um, he is going for face. Like, he wants to deal as much damage as possible. He feels like because there was a farce here, the snakes can stay alive. And uh, he's right. They are staying alive for now. Yeah, and they're definitely really awkward to clear. I mean, like, there's no fan of knives here or a uh, blade flurry, as we can see. So that's definitely a little bit rough. Tides uses it as your Drake to uh, to draw, hopefully, into something he can do next turn. And although he can probably use Van Cleef next turn, it's not what he was looking for. So Tides deciding to go face instead of dealing with uh, Pilot of Shredder. Pilot Shredder can trade into the 4 4, but uh, knowing Hannibal's by now, everything is going face, right? Or do you, do you clear the mm. 4 4? Uh, I think, yeah, I, well, I think this turn you can skip, 
because the spell power probably isn't going to come into play from the Drake. Yeah. Uh, because of Lothab. And the Drake doesn't trade well versus anything on the board, right? Um, Because anything, yeah, that, wow. Tide's really smashing these concedes in quite early. I mean, it was under so a lot of pressure, to be fair. Um, but like the Drake, they're leaving it up. That's really nice from Hannibal because there's nothing that he trades well with. If he puts the Drake into uh, the low there, it doesn't do anything. If he uh, puts it into the Shredder, it dies. And then even if he attack that 3-2 with the Drake to clear it up, then just a snake kills it. So yeah. it's really a really strong, strong game and strong start from Hannibal there with the Hunter. He knows his aggressive decks, and uh, I, I'm happy to see him on a big stage again, you know, progressing with uh, a really good aggro. And uh, a lot of people can hate on aggro, that aggro uh, decks are easy to play, but it's so tempting to trade sometimes, right? You always, or, or like, sometimes you have to trade. And uh, Yeah, I think that's the key, actually, knowing exactly when you should trade and when you should go aggressive and go face. Yeah. I think that actually makes a good aggro player versus, you know, everyone, as you said, just thinks, oh, yeah, you just go face. And it's like, well, actually, you'll lose a lot of games if you just go face. So, um, yeah, knowing when to trade is pretty key. And Hannibal's is, again, not having the most terrible opening in his, uh, in his hand. Yeah, like honestly, I find decks that are more mid rangey like Druid and Paladin, much easier to play than uh, decks like Face Hunter or Face Shaman. Yeah, I think they're. Um, I think it's just the plays are probably a bit more obvious. Whereas, like I said earlier, like the aggressive decks, sometimes like one single trade can actually make a massive impact in terms of uh, keeping control of your minions and getting that repetitive minion damage, which you need because your minions normally have much lower attack than the mid range minions. Yep, that's true. But back to the game, we have Master for Battle from Hannibal's, and there is a Blade Flurry for, for Tides, and obviously the Skazan Mystic. What do you think about that one? Uh, again, just not a surprise to see the odd tech card now in, uh, in Tides' decks. Um, Kezin's going to be, you know, pretty good, and even versus uh, Hannibal's lineup, if it's, you know, Secret Paladin, would have been pro pretty good versus the Hunter if you managed to get it off, but maybe not as effective in an ag aggressive Hunter deck. But it's going to be nice, because the thing is, in Paladin, Although, when everyone thinks of Kezen, it's like, oh, well, he doesn't deal with Challenger, right? But how many times do you play Paladin where they just, like, slip a secret in on turn 4 or turn 2 or turn 1? You know, like, there's just one secret there. And stealing, like, an Avenge or something away whilst playing a 4-3 can be actually pretty reasonable. Oh, man. I just like the consistency consistency of Hannibal's. <laughs> He's just going for phase like there's no tomorrow. But Tide's got some tools now, right? So he can... Flurry the board. Do you even backstab to get rid of the spiders? Oh no, you can attack into it. It's much better. Yeah, this is pretty nice. Just completely empty the board. And then uh, when the board's empty, the rogue is, is feeling pretty good, especially when you're sitting on a sap. Yeah, that's true. And now, even if the, there is a sludge belcher, Tides will be able to sap that exactly and, uh, and continue uh, putting some damage in. He might even decide to play Kazan Mystic as. Uh, Oh, now he definitely will play Kazan Mystic to get the secret. But like, even without the secret, he needed some pressure there. Yeah, do you think he's going to play the sap? I'd really like the sap, actually. Just slow the paladin down even more. Hmm. I think it's uh, okay. Like, um, because this turn you deal four damage to face. But on the other hand, if uh, if the shredder trades. Okay, backstab and weapon a weapon up attack into Shredder is probably much better. Just to get a small minion. Like if you're lucky enough, you will get a one-one or one-two that will not be able to kill whatever you have. Ink Doomsayer. Yeah. And oh wow! It's wow, one-one. Just as, again, nymphs. I need you to actually sit while I'm laddering and just keep saying. And Raven's gonna top deck the exact answer he needs, uh, and then I'll just keep getting them by looks of things. So if you can do that for me at some point, that'd be nice. It's uh, actually a quote I had in one tournament that I can call the cards. Like, I call the card and it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's just the, tr the trick is just uh, say a lot of things and from time yeah, to time. Say enough will... cards and something will happen exactly. one day. <laughs> so the Mysterious Challenger comes down from Manibal. So, a pretty good turn, although having one Noble Sacrifice stolen and the one in hand really negates like a big. You know, that's probably one of the key cards that Mysterious Challenger pulls because it starts to then proc all the secrets, right? Yeah. So, um, he do Tides does trade into the 1-1, one, one, keeps the, sh uh, the Shredder alive on one health, which is really nice, and procs the Redemption on the 1-1, one, one, which he really just won't care about. And he's able to actually just sack the Challenger away, build up his own board, does get Repentance, but to be honest, it's probably not the end of the world. Yeah, it's absolutely fine for Tides, especially because it protects the 4-1 Shredder, and uh, you can continue pressuring with the Kazan Mystic. 
Uh, oh, dealing uh, with all the minions. Yeah, because uh, that, that's a good attack. Uh, you want to see, as, as Hannibal Z, you want to play a Mistress Challenger again, uh, possibly. And then, like, as times you expect Mistress Challenger to happen again. And you don't want any other minions to be on board when that happens. But Hannibal Z had a, a different, a better play. Just going with the Belcher and the Shield Mini bot. Yeah, and Tides actually has a... Probably, you know, he's, he's okay with having Lothab. But um, probably wanted to see something like Sprint come out pretty soon. Just so he can prep Sprint, refill his hand, and continue to answer pretty much everything Hannibal Z is doing now. Yeah, absolutely. I think Tides of Time is in the perfect position here. And we haven't mentioned that, but this this matchup is really good for, for Rogue overall. And uh, Tides is uh, taking full control over it with those saps, having the tempo plays. I, I doubt... Uh, Hannibal playing Consecration, like he can play one, but even with Lothar, you should uh, feel good about it. Dr. Boom might be problem though. How much damage is there? 6, 7, 12. So not there yet with lethal from time to time, but if you pick something like an oil, that was almost like a win. That was a win, actually. Yeah, that's really close. He's going to heal up, get the teacher down, reasonable. And then the problem now is, though, with 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, there's 12. The 16 damage with Blessing of Kings. Yeah, through Silver Cold so, Hammer finishes the game. Or even if he wants to be risky and like run a bomb in, so you put a bomb into the 4 1 and hope it hits for more than one. Yeah, that can happen. Hopefully, four. Raven, will that happen again? Are we going to see <laughs> the bombs deciding the game? The bomb goes to space for one damage. So Ooh, it doesn't change much. Okay. Well, he can still he can still go he can still get the other bomb, right? Yeah, he does. He does. So like, if this bomb goes to face again, nope. Oh. It does kill off the three three, which makes uh, which reduces some of this down. What does he actually have to do to win here? He needs to clear the board. Well, now probably leaves a, a two two up. He got a chance not to lose actually, right? Because the weapon is not buffed. Yeah, and he can just play Noble Sacrifice, so either the weapon or the 2-2 uh, has to run in, and Tides pretty much has to top deck, what, an Eviscerate here, would you say? And that's, is that pretty much Well, it? not preparation, that's for sure. Uh, double preparation would not win this game, and uh, I think that will be it. He can attack in the 7-2, there's 8 damage incoming. Okay, so not... Not dead yet, he will still have a chance, unless I'm... There's the Avenge going, though. Oh my oh! god, no. <laughs> Tides. Wow, that was that was grim. Let's be honest, that was grim. Hannibal getting was sitting so on happy. prep for so long, and then getting a second prep, and then the one in three event. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is Hearthstone. Uh, those crazy things can happen, and they they will happen from time to time. But uh, really well played series for uh, by both players. And Hannibal Z advances. Tides of Time is not eliminated though. He still has a chance to go through. Uh, he will have to face um, the world champion, and if he def defeats the world champion, then he's still alive. Yep, and then the next match will be Hannibal Z versus Tice, so the winner's match, and the winner of that match will actually go through to the top eight straight away. Yep, that's absolutely true. Alright guys, uh, that was the second match of the day. We still have three more, I believe, so stay tuned for more Harson after a short break.